Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. It's really about, you know, getting the right players on the field, playing their very best football. We've got to be able to maximize the potential of our defensive line. And, you know, we're in conversation about are we doing that? You know, we're big. You know, we're big up front. We have to play physical. We have to play with low pads. We have to create a new line of scrimmage. So I'm not trying to avoid your question as much as I'm trying to tell you that we have to create, you know, the, the right scheme so our guys can be the best versions of themselves. It's Brian Kelly talking about his defensive line that, quite frankly, has not played very well to this point. I don't think that's breaking news to any of you listening. I, I do want to just point out some facts about this LSU defensive line. Um, number one, Jamar Kane was their defensive line coach. Uh, right before spring football is to begin in March, Jamar Kane leaves to join Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. So you lose your position coach for spring football. Is spring football the most important thing in the world? Probably not. Uh, you know, Mason Smith missed a lot of it because he was hurt. Uh, Makai Wingo is a two-year All-SEC type performer. You know, is it is it the biggest thing in the world? No, you still got the same defense, but you didn't have your position coach there for that. Then Jimmy Lindsey is hired in May. The defensive line goes through their off-season conditioning, gets ready for camp, and then right at the beginning of August, Jimmy Lindsey has an emergency medical situation and steps away from the team. So you didn't have your position coach in spring football. And now you don't have your position coach in fall camp or end of the season. And John Jancic steps in, but that was not what he was brought here to do. And is that, are those two happenings exactly the reason why LSU's defensive line is not playing great? I wouldn't put it all on that. Would I say that that's not exactly ideal? I would say that's not exactly ideal. But when we were entering this season talking about LSU's defense, we would say, okay, this is a group on the defensive front that's got Makai Wingo coming back after getting some All-American honors. It's got Mason Smith, who's on some draft boards, was a five-star recruit, had four sacks as a freshman, and really looked to come into his own as a dominant player. And Brian Kelly's told us that he changes the math up front, and you've got to deal with him. And those two guys on the front, man, that's, that's solid. Jordan Jefferson was a starter at West Virginia, played a lot of football. Jacoby and Guillory had a really strong camp. That's some more depth. You can add to your defensive line. And then on the edges, you bring in a couple of guys who have a lot of experience. And Ovia Gofu, Braden Swenson, you've got Savian Jones coming in. Harold Perkins is probably going to play down there a little bit. This is a group that really should be an excellent unit. You should be strong up front. Okay. Well, let's look at the data. Now, again, I understand that statistics can be misleading at times they can be affirming of opinions at times you can twist numbers one way or another so I understand that defensive linemen's entire jobs are not racking up tackles there are certainly fitting gaps taking on double teams pushing the pocket blowing some things up doing things that may not count in the stat sheet I know that <laughs> and that this exercise is not going to account for that However, we are just going to lay out the raw data and just tell you what we've seen. Makai Wingo at Mississippi State had three tackles, one TFL, and a sack. Against Arkansas, he had four tackles, half a tackle for loss, half a sack. And against Ole Miss, he made three tackles, none of them behind the scrimmage, no sacks. So in the last two games against Arkansas and Ole Miss, half a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Now, I think Makai Wingo is a really good player, and it's very likely, without looking at every single snap, that offensive lines are paying a lot of attention to him because he's the most disruptive force up there, certainly the most proven defensive force. But in the last two games, that's a lot of snaps that Arkansas and Ole Miss have run. He's made one play behind the line of scrimmage, statistically. Mason Smith, he has not made more than two tackles in any of the games this year. None. He is a total of one and a half tackles for loss and one of those is against Grambling. So in the FBS games he's played, he's got half a tackle for loss and no sacks. There's just no production there. Jordan Jefferson. 
He's played five games. He has two total solo tackles. Again, not the entire job of a nose tackle to make solo tackles, but he's got two. Two and a half tackles for loss, one sack. The consensus of those who have watched a lot of tape is that Jordan Jefferson has been LSU's probably best interior defender. But it ain't like he's making a lot of plays in the backfield statistically. Savion Jones, that's a guy that I pointed to. I said, look, this has got to be the next guy. Arden Key to Caleb on Chase on to B.J. Ojolari to Savion Jones. The, the highly thought of long levered athletic edge rusher who fills out and becomes a monster on the edge. That needed to happen for this LSU team to be as good as it could be. Because you brought in a couple of transfers in a Gofu and Swenson who are veterans and they're big, but they don't have a lot of pass rushing acumen over the last four years in college. Jones could be the guy. He's made one tackle behind the line of scrimmage in four FBS games. One. It was the sack against Mississippi State early in the game. That's the only time he has made a tackle behind the line of scrimmage in four FBS football games. There's just no production. LSU's 85th in the country in sacks. 77th in tackles for loss. And again, I'll go back and say it like, I know that there are things that are just as important in defensive line play than tackles for loss. Sometimes you just get double teamed and mauled so your linebacker can shoot the gap and he gets a tackle for loss that forces a fumble. And you've done a great job and there's not a statistic there to show for it. But the fact of the matter is that LSU isn't getting any stops, so I'm not going to err on the side of, oh, well, maybe they're doing some other stuff that's really good. The fact is that the defensive line that should be a strength on this team is not creating any sort of impact whatsoever. No pressure on Jordan Travis, and when you did get back there, couldn't get him on the ground. Couldn't get K.J. Jefferson on the ground. No pressure on Jackson Dart. Can't stop the run. Holes you could drive a truck through. So can it get any better? I've told you for the last couple of weeks, like this DBU lineage that we're so used to, and I've rattled off all the names. I've gone through Webster, gone through Daniels and LaRon Landry. Gone through Ty- Patrick Peterson and Morris Claiborne and Tyron Matthew and Therald Simon, Eric Reed. Gone through Jamal Adams and Tredavious White and Jalen Mills, Christian Fulton, Grant Delpit, Derek Stingley. Like we've done the whole deal. And I've said, I just don't see that guy in the secondary. Well, does that hold true to the defensive front as well? Mikai Wingo is a heck of a player. Is he Michael Brockers? It's not Glenn Dorsey, but that's an unreachable star. Not Chad Lavalle or Kyle Williams. It, it looked like it on paper, like Mason Smith could be a first-round pick, and Savion Jones might blossom into the next guy, the next B.J. Ojolari, who's starting on Monday Night Football last night. Harold Perkins off the edge is a potential All-American type guy. And then you have hope for Deshaun Womack and Quincy Wiggins and some of the guys who are really highly thought of recruits. And right now I look at it and I go, huh? No, I mean, it, it just, what's the deal? I'm not an NFL scout. I can't tell you how things grade. LSU is big, and a lot of these guys were highly recruited, and there's just not any production here. There's just not. Teams are running it. Teams are throwing it. You're not getting pressure. You're not getting sacks. You're not putting teams behind the chains. There's just nothing statistically or on tape that would suggest it. So the question is, can can Pete Jenkins fix it? He can't hurt. Pete Jenkins can't hurt. If you're asking me candidly, can he fix it? I would suggest he can't fix it. He can't take a, a defensive front that's done nothing through three weeks and make it into a steel wall. But that comes back to the point of like, how good do they need to be? They need to be good enough to get some stops, force a turnover or two, force a field goal in the red zone, and let the offense go to work on the other side. Right now, it feels a long way away, but 
we'll see you on Saturday morning. You can play a little bit better. Come back and play an Auburn offense is not very good. Deal with Army and go to a bye week. That's a lot of time to continue to work at it. I'm hopeful, but I have some significant doubt. It's just really disappointing to kind of revisit the headspace you were in in August about where this unit could be and should be and realize a month and a half in, there's just not much to show for it. It's surprising to me, honestly. I'm not stunned that the secondary is struggling. I'm a little stunned that the defensive front's no better than this. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.